Thanks, guys, for having me. Uh, I'm excited to be here. Uh, just quick, just to get a quick hand, uh, show of hands. How many of uh, you guys here consider you guys as an entrepreneur? Awesome. Um, any, anybody building hardware? Right on, right on. Great, so this will be um, right on target. So uh, what I'm, it's, it's a tough position to be in. I'm just in between pizza and beer and you guys. So I, I'm trying to, try to make it as, as short as possible, uh, but as meaningful as possible too. So um, what we do at Bitfinder, we build consumer products that help you understand uh, the air you breathe and what it means to your health and wellness. Um, why, why do we start this? So uh, when my daughter was born with eczema, um, it meant a whole new world for us. We tried all the lotions out there, all the devices out there. It was just a whole disaster with just uh, frustration. So um, when Kevin and I met, Kevin, my co-founder, he also has two sons with asthma. And we wanted to really help us help them uh, live their lives to the fullest. So this is where we started Bitfinder. Um, so when we think about air, we breathe about 20,000 times a day. That's a lot of air. Um, and it, it's not only asthmatic and or um, eczema people who suffer from air. It's really about health. And sometimes it's the productivity that air impacts in our lives. So. You know, a lot of us uh, felt stuffy nose when you guys wake up in the morning, you know, hitting a wall when you, uh, like, in the middle of the workday. And, you know, most, most of us have some type of seasonal allergies. And it's really the air that's causing all of this. So right now we're in the middle of RGA Accelerator uh, powered by Techstars. And this is uh, our beta product we just launched about a month and a half ago. Uh, we sold out our first batch in just a couple of days. And now um, we're on to the next stage. So uh, the rest of my presentation, what I'm going to focus on is we're building a connected device. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are building hardware that has a connect some type of connectivity. Um, there are lessons that we learn along the way. So the first we learned is if you build, they'll come. So you know, a lot of us use this in a different ways. But what I mean by they here is really um, the inspiration uh, potentially your co-founders, potential uh, partners along the way. So that's what I mean by it. When Kevin and I first met, we built 3D printer. And this is our picture of the 3D printer we built. When you guys are going to build something, be exceptionally awesome. This is when we launched our 3D printer at a, one of the biggest robot conferences in the world. So when you build this kind of stuff, you end up in a place like this. So this is like a Shark Tank plus American Idol in Korea. And I'm getting, I'm getting nailed by this guy um, who pretty much ran a semiconductor business for Samsung for the first time. And the guy is telling me, it's never going to work. You guys are using just off-the-shelf sensors. It's stupid, basically. So you got you to gotta hear what you want. You got, you got to be able to be resilient about your idea, what you want to build. Um, I was, we were getting cooked in that stage. So there was like um, elite eight of uh, the stage and we got cut. So no love from that, those people. But I think if you really want to build something that you are passionate about, you really need to get to the bottom of why you want to build it. But at the same time, I think it's totally fine if you are building and what you're building is not the one that you probably end up building very valuable stuff, if it makes any sense. So you just got to be able to continue on with your passion of building stuff. Make sure that you get yourself exposed to uh, right folks. And along the way, you're going to build a lot of amazing stuff. Um, these are just all the prototypes that we have built along the way. So they'll come. A lot of, uh, uh, you know, we met very valuable um, manufacturing operations, infrastructure, connections to manufacturing operations, great partners, great investors along the way. So build it, just build. Next is try to get to your first paying customer as fast as you can. 
So when we first got into um, RGA, we had about 50 of our beta products ready, and it was shipped to us. So when we were like a couple days away from shipping these guys, uh, we were thinking, should we just kind of give it to our beta customers or have them pay for it? It was basically 50-50 from our mentors. So what we, did, what we did was, heck, we made all this and we paid money for it. Why don't we call it a price that we're going to cover our cost and then see what happens? Um, we made a lot of mistakes along the way. So, for example, we are making connected device, right? The Wi-Fi connection was the worst enemy. So we got the most feedback, uh, most negative feedback. If we collect all the negative feedback we get, we got, and then put it into some bucket, it was all Wi-Fi. And like, can you imagine we're, con we're building a connected device and our device can cannot get connected? <laughs> That's the worst thing ever you can think of. But we knew when we were shipping that there would be some issues. But we knew 80% of the time that our product's going to work. So build it, know where it's going to break, but with that, ship it and let them pay for it. <laughs> so as a hardware company, you cannot be, you cannot be um, free from having a crappy biz, uh, design. So design is a, 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 a deeply rooted into our culture, but at the same time, um, I think this is what's going to drive the value, the long-term value to our customers. So we're doing a few things with our software. So on the, on the app, we're basically visualize, helping you visualize the ambient air for you. So what's the best way to help you visualize what's happening in the air around your house, around your home? We actually have one device uh, installed over here, and I'm going to see how the air is doing in, in our space right now. Thanks for the awesome space, but I'm going to have to check. <laughs> uh, so right now, it's not looking good because the CO2 level is, <laughs> CO2 level is to a point where it's like four to five times worse than what it's supposed to be. What it means is like we got here for like almost almost an hour and a half, two hours. So it's pretty natural. So what, what we're, getting in, we're getting to is in the future, we're going to have rooms like this uh, at our offices, our conference rooms that will help us. Even, we have to you know, have the doors closed anyways, right? But we're going to have a design that will pump in oxygen from time to time so that our brain will function in, in optimal position, uh, condition. So the visualization of the data is something that we're focusing on. So our office package users get a web dashboard like this. So uh, what we're, we're trying to do here is every uh, users and their environment is different from other users. So we want to get to the bottom of uh, what is it that is unique to your environment and what can you do about it. So here in this uh, customer, they have a space in their office where they do a lot of machining and uh, chemical work. So and that's where it's affecting the other part of office. And we're telling them, uh, you, should be, you should be doing some type of filtering. And you could be using some type of air purification and humidif humidification so that th that specific part is not making the other part worse and worse every day. Um, so actionable insights and actionable recommendation is like a buzzword, buzzword that we use a lot. Uh, but what we mean by this is uh, one of our customers in his office, you can see like a peaks over there. That's one through four, one through four every single day. What's that? That's the CO2 level of his office. So what it means is from one to four, he closes the door and have come in and have meetings from one to four straight. And it's like at a, when you get to a point, it's three to four p.m., you get those, uh, you, the con concentration level drops. And we send a message saying you can do very simple things. You can either open the door in between the meetings, or you can take a quick walk outside. Or if you want to really improve your air, these are the products that you can buy and purchase. So this is huge because this is where we could be very, uh, we could uh, focus on your personalized data. So for example, um, sleep 
is directly impacted by the quality of air. And everybody has different preferences in terms of the temperature, humidity, when it comes to sleeping environment. But we're going to start with the, uh, the range that says, in a scientific research, that this is an optimal environment for you to sleep. But at the same time, we're going to see your data and trying to understand what we see from specific point from uh, yeah, like humidity, temperature, and some of the air quality stuff. It's, it's, about re it's really relating our air, air data to something that is relevant to your everyday life. So next is productivity. Um, when we moved into RGA office on, on October, uh, what we, we started measuring, what we found out was that the temperature would stay con uh, consistent uh, and humidity would stay at around 18% to 20%, which is pretty normal in New York City. But the CO2 level would consistently go up from 9 o'clock when people arrive to like 8 o'clock in the morning, in the, in the evening. What that means is it sounds like and looks like the ventilation is happening, but it's really not pulling any clean air from outside. So that's a fundamental issue of how the HVAC systems are built, and this is like the start of how we can build smarter buildings. So what we're trying to do here uh, with our product, next version of product is uh, we're going to be able to find uh, a certain, certain part of your house that you would like to get cold more than the other places. So that's a combination of temperature, humidity, and other air quality issues. So for example, in living room, the dust and allergens, if they are detected, we can tell you that these are the things that are detected in your living room and these are things you can do. And the, what you can do here is uh, as simple as smarter ventilation plus recommending right products to improve that particular um, situation so that that's a market place opportunity for us. So lastly, uh, we're just really helping you understand the things that you have not been, um, not had a chance to uh, know, which is the air around you. So first product's going to focus on indoor air, and it's going to be called Aware. So we're going to be launching in about three months, shipping in uh, sometime in summer. So play, please stay tuned for uh, the product announcement. Thank you very much for your time. I'm going to open it up for a question. There is really no, you know, special way around it. You gotta. So we, I had my email written on all of the boxes that we shipped. So I had a bunch of emails coming into myself, and it was very valuable because I was hearing uh, from horse of mouth and being able to get to the bottom of it. So our team was really focused on making sure um, that the customer is doing it right, but at the same time, if we are, we were doing it right, wrong. They will tell them. So it was a direct channel uh, through email. And sometimes people would ask for my number. So I would still give it to them and call sometimes. That's faster. So direct channel that worked best for us. What are the three things to watch out for when you're building hardware? There's some things that you want to watch out for. I'm sure there's lots. Um, so I would say first, Be careful with Arduino <laughs> because, uh, yes, it's a great start point, but you gotta, at some point, you've got to be able to build something that you can scale, and you can't stay with Arduino for too long. Uh, second is um, hustle so that you can have at least some relationship with manufacturing. So when we built a 3D printer, that was golden because we had to build that huge 3D printer with about you know, over 100 parts in there. So we were just hustling in Asia trying to figure out the best channel to get it made. So if you get a chance, make sure that you, you know, put yourself in the situation to really understand the manufacturing process and along the way build a relationship with the right folks there. Yes, you can be working with PCH, electronics, the, the big guys later, but understanding the process, I think it's huge.
I don't know about the third one. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a good question. So, yes, the question was, uh, would we consider using plants to improve the, the concentration of the CO2 in rooms like this? So, yes, definitely. And there, uh, we have thought of ways to provide recommendations in different plants and different uh, rooms and different levels of con uh, concentration of CO2. So there are researches out there that we can do. We haven't been really active about plants, but um, that's one of our lists on the marketplace. Yeah, both. Yeah, the, yeah, sorry. The question is, how do we give recommendations? Are we using metadata, and or do we come up with our customized recommendations? So metadata is out there, and it's very easy to search. So Google is our first way, first place to go, and then um, use that data to really uh, look at our data from our customers. Cause they, they they vary so much in places and you know locations of the the. In the world, we have our products in eight different countries and three different continents. So it's really about understanding which information to use for a certain uh, situations. So, both. Right, last question. Last question. Yes, back. the lady in the back. Sure. So the question is, uh, someone with asthma would be specifically interested in certain parts in the air, and what are the hardware uh, components that would actually help improve it? So for people with asthma, it's really about temperature difference, some humidity, and some air quality. So it's, uh, we measure five things, which is temperature, humidity, um, carbon dioxide, VOC, and fine dust. So we, we, people with asthma, we can't really pinpoint, even doctors can't pinpoint some of the triggers for different people. But we can actually say these are our optimal situations and environments for asthma. Now with uh, hardware out there, like devices out there, humidifiers, air purifiers, the things that we could recommend. But there are, oh. What's the, what is the technology in your hardware? Oh, my, our, our tech. Right, so the technology is really combining the sensors that we already have and understanding the standards and ranges of certain uh, conditions for asthma. So that's the algorithm behind our sensors. We, met, we get the raw data from our sensors. And we have the algorithm to figure out certain conditions for asthma and then provide uh, insights based on that algorithm and the data. Uh, mold, mold, yes, mold is a combination of particular matter and a humidity, so yes, we do with mold. Yes. All right, we'll take one, one last quick one. All right. Yeah, can you make any recommendations um, as a, instead of Arduino, what we could use to go from prototype produ to production more quickly? Sure. Uh, so the question is, what are the alternatives out there for Arduino? So Arduino is a great place to start, like I said. But there are very generic uh, PCB boards out there that you can start having a good understanding of the sizes and components that you, you want to use. So, um, P, you know, DigiKey, those, you know, those sites you can get the PCB boards, which is just the ones that you can plug it in. Uh, start with that. Uh, start with Arduino, but start to transition as fast as you can, and then work with the, the small teams or small firms who can build the PCB boards for you so that you will have a great idea, better idea of uh, your pricing. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, guys.